Uh, I was very lucky. Uh, I'd been capped out of Edinburgh University. Jock Turner invited me down and uh, I was really glad to come. You may remember in these days, uh, if you didn't belong to an FP club in Edinburgh, there was really very few places you could go. So I uh, accepted Jock's invitation to come down to Gala and I was made very, very welcome. That in itself was enough to lure you out of the city because I do remember talking to you once and you told me you lived in Edinburgh, worked in Glasgow and played your rugby in Gala, Absolutely. which back in the 60s when the roads were not quite as they are now, that would be quite a commute for you. Well, I think maybe the A7 wasn't a lot worse than it is no, now. That's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, it was a, a long road, but uh, they were very tolerant. Uh, in fact, going back to Kenny Oliver, Kenny and myself and some of the other Edinburgh based boys used to be trusted by Johnny Gray and the other coaches to train up in Edinburgh on a Tuesday. So until the centenary season, uh, when the great compliment, they made me captain and I had to come down a wee bit more often. Uh, we were able just to come down for the game of the Saturday and training on a Thursday night. So that was a, a great bonus in terms of the travel, particularly for me from Glasgow. And are you able to stay and watch the playing of the Sevens tomorrow afternoon? Well, I wish I could, but I have one of the guest speakers is Ian Robertson, who has got to get back to London for work. And in the morning we're going down to see Bill McLaren, because Ian hasn't been to see him for a while. So I'm afraid it's going to be a rapid trip down to Hoyk and then back up the road to get Ian on an afternoon plane, which is a bit unfortunate. But, uh, well, hopefully this evening's guests will appreciate uh, his contribution. What have you made of the, the state of Gala Rugby Club, Borders Rugby in general, club rugby in particular, because obviously the loss of the Reavers was desperately sad for the, the region, but there's been a lot of significant developments this season. You mentioned Hoyk, of course, relegated for the first time. Gala themselves, one of a number of clubs that will make Premier 2 very interesting next season, I would guess. Well, I think uh, for any of the players that played in my generation, where international players were not unusual in every border club virtually. Uh, the demise of Gala is for me an enormous heartbreak and I feel extremely sad for Hoik as well. You know, the old rivalry goes out the window when a thing like this happens. And uh, I've observed, probably more observed than anything else from a distance, and it has been a very, very sad time for border rugby. Um, I wish in a way that one could revert to the old days but at the same time the demise of the club structure I don't think necessarily helped enormously by the emphasis on the professional teams and I don't mean the Reavers here I mean the Edinburgh and Glasgow teams uh, I think that this hasn't helped and I think the clubs have been just too diminished for my liking I'd like to see the clubs being a nursery for international players but where strength goes back and where young players have still the chance to play with good quality players as they did when I played Tell us then a little bit about what you, you've gone on to do following retirement from the game. Well, I've been primarily involved uh, as well as uh, raising a family of four and keeping my wife uh, uh, happy at home. Uh, I've uh, run a full-time job, obviously, but also throughout the last 25 years, 26 years, I've run the Sportsman's Charity, which has been given that I had a full-time job has been quite a preoccupation and it's been involved in social inclusion causes it's raised a couple of million pounds and it has been fairly full-time indeed since 2004 I've been working on this full-time